Welcome back to the garage and welcome to my latest project. This is a 1990s ZXR 750H1. But before we got too carried away and before you start typing in, what about the Hypermotard? Don't worry, that will be sorted before I get stuck into this bike. But I've been looking for a restoration project probably for the last couple of years. And when I moved, and redid the garage, doing this sort of project was very much on my mind. So we're going to have a new series starting in the autumn where I fully restore this bike. This bike was basically parked up 12 years ago and hasn't been started since. So it's going to be quite a lot of work getting this bike up together again and bringing it back to the fantastic glory days. I used to own one of these back in the 90s and uh, I used to love it and I've always hankered after another one. I think it still looks fantastic, even by today's standards, and I can't wait to get it back together and ride it. But before we do that, let's go back a couple of weeks to when I picked it up, and I'll show you how this all started. Chopsy, roll the intro. Lead the way, Bagpuss. Lead the way. <laughs> right, just think you want to go left in here. So here we are. The new, the new project. 1990 ZXR 750 H1. Like I used to own when I was in my teens. So this is going to be a full restoration, really. A nut and bolt restoration. The bike hasn't, was it 12 years, Peter? This is Peter. 12 years, Peter, 15, since it's been run. 2013 was when it was last on the road and basically it was laid up, parked up and not started since. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting project this one. Um, it's probably going to be completely taken apart, everything off and rebuilt. Not the original clocks. So we worked out, I think it's got about 25,000 miles when we worked out from the old MOTs and stuff, about 25,000 miles on it. Um, 33 years old now, would you believe? 33 years old. She has arrived to her new home. Now, first of all, before we go any further with this video, those typing in the comments, where's the Hypermotard? <laughs> Don't worry, the Hypermotard will be put back together before I start this bike. Before I get into this bike in anger, the Hypermotard is going to go back together. I haven't got room for two bikes in bits. So don't worry, the Hypermotard will be happening first. It's in these cupboards. It's in these boxes down here. Basically, I'm awaiting my Craftworks unit still. I still haven't got the unit. I've been waiting four months for the Craftworks cupboards to turn up so I can put everything back together in the garage, sort through all of my hyper bits. I've got loads in the shed as well, but I can't do that until the bloody cupboards turn up from Craftworks and they've been four months. I'm hoping they're going to come next week, but it's killing me. So we can't start this until the hyper's back together. So those getting excited for this project, you're going to have to hold off. It's probably not going to get going until um, the autumn. Probably until the autumn. What I may do to start with, because this hasn't been started in 12 years, is see if it will run. I can't put it away and forget about it without knowing if it's going to run or not. So I'm going to take the tank off, take the carbs off, clean the carbs, change all the fluids, um, see if it will start. The throttle cables are seized, the choke cables seized. It could be that it could be the actual carbs. Let's have a look through here. It could be the actual carbs are all gunked up, but I don't know. It could be they're sort of just gunked and you know, the throttle uh, butterflies or whatever. Not butterflies, throttle tubes, is it? <laughs> this is this is old school. Throttle tubes are just seized because of they were left with fuel in them. This probably took four star, but who remembers four star and two star petrol? <laughs> This has probably had four star in the tank back in like 1990. When did four star? If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm not talking about these people. Four star petrol, hands up if you remember it. I was probably only 16 when four star petrol disappeared, but yeah, that was before. At least you haven't got to worry about any ethanol 
in the fuel tank on this one. The reason I bought this bike is because the body works very good. The tank is also pretty much immaculate. I've looked inside the filler, doesn't seem to be any rust inside. Obviously the fuel's all gone and it stinks in there, but I need to get a camera inside and inspect the lower parts of the fuel tank, see what the situation is. But all of the bodywork elements are pretty decent on this bike. It needs a lot of work. The, the swinging arm is going to be stripped down and fully resprayed by Adam at A1 Powder Coating. So it's going to be a full frame, full swinging arm, respray, obviously new chain. Everything on this bike is going to come off, be polished, plated or painted and then put back together. So it's a nut and bolt restoration is what I'm doing here. And this is going to go back in original condition. I'm not interested in modifying this. This is going to be a back to standard condition. I'm even going to be replacing you know, the standard indicators and putting the standing ind indicators back on. It's going to be very a, a sensitive restoration. I mean, I did think about putting on later upside down forks and stuff, but no, it, it's not going to be about that. This is going to go back to 100% original condition. So uh, that's the plan. It's a lot of work here, a lot of work. And I must say a massive thank you to Peter and his friend who contacted me and said, because I did a video probably last year sometime when I went through my bike history and I used to own one of these when I was probably 22, something like that. I'll pop a picture on the screen. This is me on my bike. So I've always said, if I fancy doing a restoration and why not do it on a bike I used to own, I used to love. So this is sort of a personal sort of journey for me really to revisit my, my childhood to a degree and get myself back on one of these. I think these still look fantastic. To, these bikes haven't aged. It still looks fantastic today. It looked brilliant in the 80s. It looks just as good these days. And you really don't see many of these on the road anymore. And because this is all there from a bodywork point of view, I think it's worth the punt and take a risk. I mean, it could be I'm gonna uncover all sorts of unknown, unknowns with this bike. What problems am I going to find when I start stripping it? I'll probably do a compression test while I've got all the tank off and everything, see what compressions it's got, go through the whole bike and basically bring it back, restore it and then go out and ride it. Oh, I mean, these were never that fast back in the day. These are, yeah, these are sort of 110 horsepower. I think 110 horsepower weighs 220 kilos. So, you know, it's no lightweight and they were never that fast back in the day. So, you know, it's not going to be I don't know, maybe it will be exciting. I know you have to rev them quite a lot. These were built for World Superbike. So these are really built for World Superbike Championship. You know, Honda had the RC30 and, and Yamaha had the OW01, which were specialist bikes. This was built for the masses. And uh, yeah, I, I can't wait to get cracking on this, but don't worry, the Hypermotard will be going back together first. I'll be going up, getting the engine put back together back at Nelly's and cracking on with that. The reason it hasn't happened, because these bloody cupboards haven't turned up. I'm hoping they're going to come next week. I've got tracking information now, but they've been sat in France for two and a half weeks without moving, stuck in customs. So it's just been an absolute joke from start to finish. If you like the sound of what's going to happen to this bike, give me a subscribe below. But don't be nagging me saying, where is it? You know, it's not going to be... I may do a video where we try and get it running fairly soon, um, but it's not going to be... We're not going to get cracking properly until the, uh, until the autumn, probably. But there we go. As you can see, you know, up close, it's been st stored in a, a damp garage. You know, there's, a, there's a lot of surface corrosion over everything. Now, if we have a look in here, subframe, all this is going to have to be repainted. <laughs> it's still got the 09 tax disc on it. Micron exhaust. I don't know what's going on here. I need to sort of strip down and see what's happening. But you can see all the calipers are going to need restoration, repainting new seals. You know, everything's going to need cleaning. Wheels, repowder coating, new bearings. Here's the frame, a fair few chips on the frame. So there's a lot of work here, but fundamentally, you know, the bodywork is pretty decent. The tank's decent. These fairing panels are pretty decent, bear a lot of tiny little wear marks on them. This front cow is probably going to be repainted because it's got a bit of a crack down at this side. So re repaint the front cow. Put the original screen back on. We don't want no blue tinting going on. Suspension will need to be stripped, rebuilt. Discs, maybe how to save them, not sure. But just going through everything. I mean, look at it in there, look, it's minging. Everything cleaned, painted, polished, or plated. 
It's a hell of a lot of work here. It's a hell of a lot of work, but when this is done, these go for about six to seven thousand pounds, all in all in good condition, all up together. So, you know, I got it for a really good price, and uh, it's going to be a fantastic project. So, if you like the sound of it, press the subscribe button below, and I'll see you soon for some more garage antics. I'll leave you with some close-up details of this machine, and I'll see you on the next video, guys. See you later.